Hi everyone, welcome to this video on distances and similarity me measure. Understanding distances and similarity measure is crucial in the field of machine learning and deep learning uh, for many reasons. Um, these measures play actually a foundational role in various algorithms and models and tasks contributing to a better model development and efficiency of the uh, models or learning process. It's pretty useful in the feature space analysis, clustering, classification models, nearest neighbor search, anomaly detection, text based uh, applications, to name a few. So let's get started with the uh, basics of uh, some of the basic distances and similarity measures. In this video, I'll talk about uh, some of the conceptual aspects of each of the distance measures. We'll also talk about the use cases and we'll also look at some of the python demos so let's get started the tire the kind of uh, distance measure that i will be covering here euclidean distance very famous taxi cab and manhattan minskowski which is basically a framework or um, a generalized uh, you know model or you can say generalized formula which can do both euclidean and taxi cab plus uh, many more and then the card index, Hamming distance, Levenstein distance, and Canberra distance, Chebyshev. So these are uh, some of the uh, you know basic uh, distance measure. There are many other types of similarity measures that exist for text, images, and some of the complex data distributions. And those will will, will be covered in subsequent uh, lectures, uh, like NLP or generative AI, <coughs> generative AI, and so on and so forth. So prerequisite for this uh, video um, or this topic is understanding of Python programming, NumPy, basics of data science, essentially data processing, and some elementary idea of uh, machine learning. Euclidean distance is essentially uh, something that we learned in school days, like class eighth or ninth. It's uh, essentially a measure of straight line distance between two data points. So data point means like two samples, two rows. So let's uh, see some demo about, uh, you know, first the uh, coordinate geometry, some of the basic things that we will try and recap. So some, some of the basic things that uh, we have to know, points and line and equations. So points in uh, our case would be like sample or a row. Line is, which is, uh, you know, connecting the samples or rather the distance. So uh, if you just, uh, you know, look at the plot here, the, this is a point. So these two are points. Point means the sample in a row and the distance between them is the Euclidean distance, for example. So if we have a data set of customers and uh, let's say you want to represent the, them by age, salary and savings and some arbitrary numbers and you can plot those uh, in terms of points. So the red ones are all of these are points. Essentially, when we look at our data set and all these samples, and those sam samples can be represented in, uh, if it is two column, two dimensional um, you know, geometrical space, or three column, three, di three dimensional, or similarly, n number of columns would be n dimensional space. See, likewise, we can also have curves and hyperbola and those are all you know typical uh, you know representations of the points or sample likewise the clustering for example these are these are your customers and they can be represented in two dimension using these points in two dimension and uh, the cross is nothing but your uh, center center of the cluster Anomaly detection, let's say these are majority of your customer, but some customers, because of their buying habit or you know spending habits, they could be treated like uh, outlier here. So, so essentially distances and, uh, and, the, and the ways we measure the distances are very crucial in AI applications. So that was a quick introduction on coordinate geometry. Let's talk about Euclidean distance, which is basically a measure of straight line distance between two records or two samples. 
is commonly used and uh, one of the uh, most popular uh, method although it's very simple in nature it is very popular in uh, the uh, in, in the models like clustering models or classification models even uh, dimensionality reduction the equation is pretty easy i mean uh, the two points the two samples and it's simply the x2 minus x1 square minus y2 minus y1 square so if you have these two points, 1 and 2, and 4 and 6, so it would be 4 minus 1, square, 6 minus 2, square, and then you do a square out of that. And that gives you the distance. So this is the distance between these two samples. Some of the strengths of the Euclidean distance, it is very intuitive. It's like shortest distance, straight line distance between the two points. And very easy to you know uh, you know conceptualize is simple to compute as well and applicability to various data types like you know it can be applied to mostly numerical but in some cases uh, if you represent the categorical data with proper encoding like frequency method or a mean method or weights method uh, then we can use uh, Euclidean distance as well in those cases and it's well suited for applications like clustering and uh, you know also to measure similarities between the samples uh, Euclidean distance is pretty useful in those cases widely adopted and understood and used by many of the applications despite this there are some weaknesses of Euclidean distance and uh, we will talk about each of these weaknesses we will try and understand why these weaknesses uh, we need to understand very clearly and uh, so that we make a better choice of distance distance measure so one of them is the features with larger scales uh, may dominate that means if you have a column of uh, you know varying scales like one digit the other column two digit the next column three digit then euclidean distance can be a uh, problematic solution and Euclidean distance assumes a linear relationship within the features because it's all about straight, straight line distance so it's not suited for curvy and uh, you know non-linear type of representation outliers if you have in your data set that can distort the computation especially if you're trying to find the close matches and it is uh, designed for numerical data and may not be suitable for simple categorical data. Let's say, you know, you uh, make uh, encoding like 0, 1, 2. In those cases, it may not be suitable. But if you have, uh, you know, little advanced encoding scheme, then Euclidean distance can be used. In high dimensional spaces, Euclidean distance, uh, you know, creates a major problem. And this problem is called curse of dimensionality. We will understand this particular problem uh, in terms of concept and also, uh, you know, by looking at some Python code, we will derive the intuition behind, uh, you know, the curse of dimensionality. Essentially, this is important and this point is also important. So we're going to talk about these two points very soon. So effect of uh, scale differences on Euclidean distance, let's say we talked about it, how Euclidean distance is sensitive to scale or scale of features, meaning the magnitudes of individual features can influence the computation. Let's say you have these two points, two and three and six and eight, and you apply the Euclidean distance formula, we get the distance between these two points as 6.4. Now let's uh, scale the second feature, uh, like this one, 6 and 8. Let's make it 6 and 80. Now the scale has changed. And if you compute the distance, now it is 77. So it was 6.4, now it's 77.1. So if you have data which varying scales, then the distances could be pretty large. Euclidean distance and a non-linear data. This is another, uh, you know, uh, weakness. Uh, for linear re relationship, uh, it works uh, really nicely. 
for non-linear space, the Euclidean distance may not be a good choice. For example, uh, let's say you know you have the data points representing the hours and uh, on the x-axis and the exam score on the y-axis. If this relation is linear, then Euclidean distance can capture the relationship uh, perfectly. In a non-linear relation, uh, where the relationship between the variables are non-linear, Euclidean distance may not be able to capture the patterns, especially the curves and bends and so on and so forth. For example, a uh, data set with uh, forming a circle in a two-dimensional space. In that case, uh, if you notice, uh, if it is a circular space, then the points on the opposite end uh, would uh, be just the straight line distance here. Point on the opposite end of the circle uh, may not be accurately represented. So it's like a circle and there are two points. So we are taking this as a distance rather than this distance here. So that's the weakness of uh, Euclidean distance in such cases. An outlier in Euclidean distance, so if you have data which is really outlier, then in that case, uh, the computation again can go a little skewed. For example, let's say the data points A, B, and C, and uh, C is kind of an outlier. So distance between A and B is, is uh, you know, square root of eight. The distance between A and C is 31.62. So the Euclidean distance between A and B is very small compared to the uh, distance between A and C. The, the outlier due to the extreme value significantly, you know, affects the computation. Now categorical data, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, if you have very straight, uh, you know, categorical data like, you know, dog, uh, you know, cat, fish, and dog, you know, those kind of data. And we choose to convert using one hot encoding. Let's say, uh, for example, we have three unique uh, pets, dog, cat, and fish here. So we can convert that column into one hot encoding, like 100010001, okay, like that. In that case, uh, that would be uh, an issue. So let's say uh, X, Y, Z represent the one hot encoding feature for these three uh, pets. So the equivalent distance between A and B, A is a sample. So for example, let's go back here. So they, this is A, this is B. So then in that case, uh, it will be, uh, you know, the distance uh, will be 1.732. Similarly, if uh, there is any other animal instead of uh, fish, uh, maybe dog, still the distance is going to be the same. So the issue is while the Euclidean distance calculation is technically possible, I mean here, because it's a numeric value, resulting distances will not give you a meaningful, uh, you know, understanding. The encoding here is saying equal dissimilarity uh, between uh, like dog and fish or dog and cat, which is not what we want. So in this case, it is not uh, desirable. In such cases, uh, we are not going to get benefit by using uh, Euclidean distance. Now, one major problem with uh, Euclidean distance is when you talk about high dimensionality. Let's say 10 dimension or 100 dimension data set. As the number of dimensions or number of columns increase, there is a there is tremendous effect on uh, the Euclidean distances that you compute. For example, here, this is what you get as the distance between the two-dimensional one. Let's say now the point A and B are now represented using 10 columns. So the number of points, number of dimensions or number of columns have increased. So then the computation is going to factor in all of those dimensions. So in higher dimensions, the magnitude of the differences become crucial because you are squaring them. So each of the dimension, we are squaring uh, the differences. So even the small differences along any dimension will contribute 
significantly to the overall distance. Now there is an effect of uh, high dimensionality uh, in uh, you know uh, when we talk about you know high dimensional data set. As the number of dimensions increase, the Euclidean distance tends to make all points approximately equidistant. So what it means is uh, it's a very uh, interesting phenomena. Let me uh, just draw here. So if you have two dimension data set, uh, then in that case, uh, the point can be represented here. If it is three dimension again, it can be represented like this. If it is four dimension, again, the point can be represented in the four dimensional space. As the number of dimensions of the column increase, what happens is the points tends to spread out in the n-dimensional space. And it sort of gives you an effect of a Q. And uh, for example, here, three-dimension Q. And you can think of the point moving towards the edges. All the points are moving towards the edges. If all the points are moving towards the edge, that means the, you know, the points are equidistant from each other. Okay, so that's the uh, problem here with Euclidean distance and high dimensionality. Now, one more issue with the Euclidean distance is uh, when we have sparse data, that means, for example, you know, you have dimensions and only one column has value and the rest of the column are all you know zero similarly another you know sample zero and zero zero and one and maybe you know one here so this is a sparse representation in this case the distances are the same and the sparse data and the euclidean distance situation is also something that we have to consider so sparse data means significant portion of the uh, feature representation are zero or near zero. And this happens mostly in the text data processing. So when you process the text data and you prepare the representation for the text data, the data or the words will be represented uh, in this fashion. So that is also one of the considerations that we have to keep in mind whether the data is sparse representation for example here document one which is the text on data let's say pdf and this is pdf2 pdf3 and and these are the vocabulary words for example and nothing else only five vocabulary words so the document i like apple and banana can be represented by pu putting uh, one in the appropriate places so you notice here there are number of zeros are much more than the number of non-zeros. So this is the uh, sparse data. So the data when it is sparse, each row is a document and each column is a word here. And the values represent the how many times the word is appearing in the. So using sparse data, uh, you know, computing Euclidean distance doesn't make sense because uh, here the distances between document one and two would be the same as distances between two and three. So Euclidean distance will not be able to differentiate the uh, you know, uh, PDFs or text data efficiently. So we should look at some uh, other alternate uh, you know, measures, uh, cosine similarity, which uh, we are not going to cover in this video. But uh, in a later video, we'll talk about cosine similarity. So let's uh, look at some of the you know uh, aspects uh, in terms of Python coding. So first, I'm going to show you how to compute Euclidean distance in Python. Um, so this is either you can use your own little function to compute the Euclidean distance. So if you have data points in uh, two dimension, simply call that function, which will uh, do the you know for subtracting the coordinates and then square them after squaring you apply a, a square root so that's going to return the distance between two samples so this is the distance that you have just computed and likewise uh, you can uh, use some packages also um, for example here 
so yeah, some of the issues with the uh, Euclidean distance, if you have uh, data which has a varying scale, then that could be an issue with the Euclidean distance. So we look at some other mechanism, alternate, alternate mechanism, like a Mahalonovis distance, which can be used in such cases. So SciPy pro provides you with uh, Euclidean distance and similarly uh, scikit-learn also provides a function for computing the Euclidean distance. Next, uh, take a look at the scale. So if you have the data with a varying scale and if you measure here the uh, data, original data and the Euclidean distance that we computed between the data points, like you know, first data point, second data point, third data point, and you notice here the distances are uh, distances are larger between first data two data points and uh, between the second and third second and third also here so, so that's because of the scale here so that proves that uh, we need to uh, look at the scaling aspect and uh, bring the data uh, values to a common scale now curse of dimensionality is an interesting phenomena as the number of dimension increases, uh, here is a little function. In this, I'm what I'm doing is I'm increasing the number of columns here to maximum 100. We're starting with one, and then uh, we ca can compute the average distance between the points. So as you notice, as the, the number of columns is increasing, the average distance is exponentially increasing here this is just to demonstrate the point here as you increase the number of dimensions in case of uh, Euclidean distance the they tend to uh, move away uh, in the n dimensional space and that gives an effect of large distances between the samples for example here if you see here we started with the distance of 1.5 and slowly the distances are increasing okay so that proves the uh, problem with the curse of dimensionality now another phenomena that happens with the uh, curse of dimensionality is the points become uh, equal distances from each other as the number of samples increase or number of uh, dimensions increase i'm sorry not the number of samples but number of dimensions so here you can see here the original two-dimensional space and then we compute the pairwise distances uh, with a large number of columns. You notice here how the uh, points tend to be, first of all, uh, equidistant. And if they are equidistant, then, um, you know, finding a nearest neighbor or finding anomalies becomes very, very difficult. So Euclidean distance is also impacted by outlier. If you have a data which has some points which are outlier and you compute the distances, then it's going to be a problem. So similarly, uh, the issues with the sparse data, we talked about it. If you have uh, the columns containing uh, the same value or zero value in most places, and then you compute the uh, Euclidean distance. In most cases, uh, the distances would be the same between the sample. So that defeats the whole purpose of Euclidean distance. That means for sparse data, uh, this is not suitable. So that's pretty much in terms of demo. I'll be uploading the code sample for you. You can take a look at it when you have, you know, um, when when you have time. So that was a quick, uh, you know, walkthrough of some of the issues with Euclidean distance. Nonetheless, in the Euclidean distances, one of the measure, the first measure that uh, you, you're going to try with uh, any machine learning, for example, neighbor-based algorithm. Next uh, measure that we will talk about is the Manhattan or a taxi cab. The name Manhattan comes from the grid layout of the streets in the city of manhattan it's like you know grid here yeah, rows and column you know that type of grid in the city uh, city of manhattan from that uh, the name uh, distance measure manhattan was taken 
so for example here now there are two points for example here and here and the manhattan distance or taxi cab distance can be computed by taking the differences along this axis and also along this axis so we take the absolute difference between the two coordinates here is we are talking about two dimension if it is 200 dimension also the same thing for each of the dimension we just take the absolute difference and we add them together so that defines the distance between the two samples so type of that data where manhattan is more suitable so it is more suitable when you deal with grid like uh, you know layouts for example gaming boards or situations where the the traversal is both horizontal and vertical in both cases it is very very useful it is also very useful in sparse data euclidean was a problem here so and manhattan can be more effective uh, in this case why so because in manhattan only we consider the non zero dimensions the zero dimensions do not add any uh, effect in the overall computation so it is less sensitive to the presence of zeros so if we have data which has many places uh, like zero then manhattan may be a good choice is also robust to outlier um, not completely not like fully robust but it is sort of better than uh, you know euclidean it gives equal importance to all of the directions or all of the dimensions so that's uh, pretty straightforward and there are packages in python which can compute the manhattan distance minkowski is a generalized uh, distance matrix means there are some configuration parameters here with that uh, you can implement euclidean or manhattan or variation of uh, the same so minkowski is just a general one where uh, you can put uh, r equals to 1 2 3 4 and so on and so forth so if you make this 2 it becomes euclidean if you make it 1 then it becomes manhattan or taxi cab so minkowski is pretty useful framework where you can use different values and experiment with the model and find out for what value of r the machine learning model works nicely so the minkowski is when uh, r equals to 1 it gives you manhattan r equals to 2 it gives you euclidean Chebyshev is like when you have infinity, then you can get the effect of will Chebyshev distance. We'll talk about Chebyshev as to what it is. Now, interesting uh, measure called the Card Index. This is very useful when you deal with text data like word or words, tokens, and so on and so forth. It's not good for numeric uh, data. For example. let's say you have two sets and these are the values 1 2 3 4 and 3 4 5 6 6 there's a card index is talking about the numerator and denominator the numerator is the intersection or the common element between the two sets denominator is the union of the two sets and the result is the number which talks about the similarity that means more the commonality is higher the index so in document analysis especially text uh, the card index is very useful for example apple orange banana pear and here also apple and orange so how many common elements two common elements total number of elements would be 6 so the card index is 1 by 3 so this talks about the similarities in the text data it's uh, also very useful for recommendation system let's say you are building a recommendation system and user 1 has rated the movies the following movies user 2 has rated these movies so you can compute the the card index between the user 1 and user 2 and that's going to be 
only one common element i guess here or uh, no common element or inception is the only one common element and divided by five or something so that is the i missed out here so there must be total number of is one two three four five yes it should be a five here so this will be one over five that's the less of a commonality so recommendation systems also we can use the card index lot of biology projects based on biology data and bioinformatics you know we use uh, the card index especially like you know gene set 1 and 2 and you want to compare how sim similar they are you can apply the card index numerator is a common and uh, denominator is all of the union some more example here so text data recommendation system genomic data social network analysis all of these areas you can use the card index let's talk about one more distance basic distance measure called hamming distance this measures the difference between two strings so let's talk about it the there are strings of equal length and you want to find out the hamming distance it simply counts the position at which the corresponding characters or symbols are different so is applicable again to you know sequences and the binary sequences or you know all those uh, genetics or characters or text string only thing is only uh, condition is they have to be of equal length so calculation is simply you know how many places they are not similar so that is the equation here so wherever is not similar that would be 1 and where wherever they are similar that would be treated as 0 so let's take an example here for example 11001 and this one is this so just compute so this is 11 similar and 10 not similar 01 not similar this is similar this is similar so two places is not similar so the hamming distance is 2 Okay, so properties of Hamming distance. It's uh, always non-negative, and it is defined for strings with the equal length. Larger the Hamming distance, more the dissimilarities in the string. Now, similar to uh, Manhattan, there is another distance measure called Canberra. So, what this does for each of the dimension, it takes the value and it does the absolute of that, and then divides the each of the dimension absolute and sum them up so this is a distance matrix used to measure the dissimilarities between the two vectors so this is pretty good for numeric data and particularly suitable where the variables have different scales we talked about it the variables with different scales uh, even manhattan would be impacted euclidean is definitely impacted much more Canberra sort of does well when you have uh, you know columns with the varying scale. So how to compute is pretty easy. Let's say you have the vectors two, four, six, one, three, seven. For each of the dimension, it will compute the difference two minus one, four minus three, six minus seven, and do an absolute. And after that, we divide it here by the each of the dimensions so uh, you know magnitude here and then we add them together so this will return the canberra distance this is this uh, is pretty similar to manhattan but uh, you know also different is good for numeric data with a varying scale the last measure that i'm going to talk about is chebyshev distance is pretty interesting and is good for um you know finding outliers and stuff like that let's talk about how this actually works let's say we have two vectors 472158 so what we're going to do here is we find out the difference between each of the positions 4 minus 1 7 minus 5 2 minus 8 and do an absolute and we pick the maximum and that is the distance so essentially if it is 100 dimension vector 
we will find out the differences at each of the dimension for each of the dimension and for whichever dimension it gives the maximum distance or difference we pick that as the representation of distance between the samples and that is called Chebyshev distance between the samples x and y so when to use Chebyshev distance uh, especially for outlier detection is very good and some of the engineering projects like you know signal processing you would like to differentiate the two signals then it is very good image processing also we use Chebyshev distance so that's pretty much i wanted to cover in the you know primer module on distances and measures more uh, different types of distances and measures i will be covering in uh, you know subsequent videos when we talk about text or images thanks for watching see you in the next video